Game's just wrapped up here at Priory Lane, home of Eastbourne Borough. Mike, tricky couple of weeks, but we've come away today again to another tricky place. Two all draw. We'll pick apart the main moments in that, but first and foremost, mate, let's give us your thoughts on that today. Yeah, brilliant. Really good, actually. Uh, I think we got um, par sent off after about 15, 16 minutes. Um, 75, possibly 80 minutes, I think it was. Um, playing with those 10 men, absolutely heroic. And, um, you know, under some sort of trying conditions because, you know, they were influencing the referee. It was, it was tough. Kept talking about us time wasting stuff like that. So um, eventually, you know, the referees crumbled, which we thought he might level it up a little bit, and uh, and he did. But um, you know, overall pleased with that. Yeah, game of game of decisions today. Certainly contestable decisions from the man in the middle. Um, overall, the stat sheet will tell us it was a game of three penalties, one red card. Big decisions that have been made from the man in black. I know it's a little bit of a biased point of view, but I was stood right behind both of our penalties. The first one, it was as clear cut a challenge as you'd ever seen. He's completely missed the ball and brought the man down and Harvey slotted it away. And the second one, they're a little bit more difficult to call. But if the ball does strike an arm when it's up at the side, then unfortunately the referees these days have got to give it. As in standard fashion, we were miles away from the uh, from the uh, Eastbourne equaliser. But it, you know, I've had a chat with Spence afterwards. He's claiming he was nowhere near it, and it was just he's gone down under very soft contact. So, you know, it's it's a game where we've got those decisions, but maybe not got those decisions yeah. in some respects. I mean, you know, for us being down to ten men for that amount of time and not not getting the three points, we're disappointed because we didn't get the three points because we just thought with those five, six, seven minutes to go, we just thought we had enough. Um, and if you're working things in, on training um, and we do that Tuesdays and Thursdays and we come to the game on a Saturday, they should have been primed and prepped, which is what they are. Um, so we don't need to go ballistic on the sideline. We don't need to get carried away and lose our emotions because we need clear thinking people. When we're making those subs towards the end, that's calculated thinking about what are we going to do to try and get three points from this game. So from, from my point of view, I'll let Maka and uh, Oski run up and down the line and get in trouble. But I need to, I'm the decision maker and I need to be cool and calm and I need to make sure that we're going to get points for this club. And I thought uh, the lads were dedicated to the calls today. They were credit to Chippenham and um, you know very proud of those boys, especially with the last sort of couple of games that we've had. It hasn't been great. But, uh, you know, we either pick ourselves up, dust ourselves down and get on with it or, we, you know, we finish, don't we, at the end of the day. And, you know, I don't want to do that. Good. So let's break down a few of the key moments in the game today then, Mike. Obviously, we started very strong. We looked like we came out, certainly not the away side, really. If anything, we were pressing high. We looked like we were really taking the game to Eastbourne. And then, unfortunately, it sort of smacked of... Same old story for the last couple of weeks, wherein that we've been caught down the right hand side and a bit, a bit of bad luck, one bit of quality. It's coming from the right hand side, and the man's nodded it back at him, you know, at the back stick, and it's gone in. Mm. He sat there thinking at one 0 maybe we can try and do our best to get back into this. And then, unfortunately, the first real decision that the referees had to make in the game today, the red card for Kieran Parcell. I don't think anyone who's even remotely associated with football can try and defend that one. Really, it was Stonewall. Yeah, it was a Stonewall penalty, um, and you know, unusually for Kieran. Um, you know, he's made a couple of mistakes in the last couple of games and, it, and it's cost us, you know, there's no two ways about it. He's sitting in, the, in that change room and he's gutted. But over the last couple of uh, seasons that I've been here, it's been very rare of him to make mistakes. So um, we've all done it, we've all been there. And, um, you know, I was pleased with the reaction of the players because those 10 men for the next 20 minutes just rallied. And uh, actually we had a couple of chances within that period. And that, that probably was the best period where we got a lot of possession. I think we got the, uh, the goal back then in that time as well. And it just settled us down a little bit going in at half time because it's quite easy. Um, you know, we, we should be losing games like that four or five one when you're a man down. So it's pleasing for us to do all our work on the training ground and then see them implement it today. And, uh, you know, I'm pleased for the directors as well. Uh, the few supporters that come were fantastic as well, weren't they? Shouting and uh, clapping the lads. And it, it's nice to get a well done from uh, some of the crowd as you're coming off. And, uh, you know, I was really, really pleased with them. Good stuff. And you see, like, um, decisions change games there. It felt like we were really galvanised by what happened following the sending off. We really dug our heels in after that. It was a fantastic save from Will Henry tipping the ball over the bar from the free kick that followed. Uh, we've gone down the other end of the pitch and suddenly Manny sprung to life. Jacko's looked really lively. It was Jacko's flick in towards uh, where I think Manny was for the foul, uh, for the first penalty. 
minutes after that as well, people sort of forget in big games like, uh, you know, big moments in games, we forget that Kieran, the new sign in there, has volleyed one off the foot of the post. We've gone close again with Adam nearly slotting Jacko in, but a great tackle from their centre half. And if anything, for the following 40 minutes of certainly the first half as well, we were, we were the only team really pressing. Yeah. It only got to the point where it started to look as if we were then going ahead and with the penalty, the second penalty, a ball that struck the arm was again slotted away by Harvey. It only looked then that really Eastbourne wanted to try and step and press you and eventually, without meaning to sound too bitter, it was a referee that levelled the game. Yeah, it was really and, uh, you know, that, that's disappointing. But, you know, I don't want to come on here and be moaning and groaning about the referees because I, I, I don't do that anyway. And if, if we're bad, we're bad and if we're good... Uh, you know, I'll tell you, and, and I think everybody who didn't attend today, you need to know that these lads have tried 150% for you, and they have absolutely sweated blood. And um, you know, that's pleasing for the club, for the directors, supporters, for the coaching staff. And uh, you know, you, you've you've got them on board. They're willing to listen. They're all good lads. They're trying to do the right thing. And you know, we're we're minnows in this league. And so for us to come away and get results like this. Um, you know, it's brilliant because at the moment our away form is is a lot better than what our home form is. There's no no denying that. So, but this is the first week where I've looked at training and we haven't had people out with COVID. We've not had people with flu or a cold. Uh, fitness. We've only got two injured now. Where the last couple of weeks we've had fours and fives. So it, I, when I seen us training at Sarancester uh, on Thursday night, I had a look at the team and I thought, Do you know what? This is the first time we've brought somebody in from Swindon Town, Ricky Azier, who's been absolutely fantastic today with his energy. A couple of strikes on goal and lucky not to score as well. I thought he was the difference in the first half for us. Um, he maybe ran out of legs a little bit in the second half, but only because I think he needs games. Um, we could have made a coaching decision to take him off, but I thought it's better for us in the long run uh, over this next month that he's going to be with us, that um, you know we keep him on for his fitness. And uh, what a pleasure, what a pleasure to, to work with him and uh, see him play. Um, I went down to watch Swindon versus Plymouth on Tuesday night. This is where people don't know what hours you're doing and working. Gets back at two o'clock in the morning, uh, sends a text over to Maka. We're having him all day long because he looks a great player. So, um, yeah, pleased that I've uh, done my due diligence on him and uh, we've got a player. Good stuff. And obviously we'll move on. We'll catch up with Ricky in a bit as well as a new signing. But speaking of, of course, for the next couple of weeks, we've now got a fairly hectic schedule coming in. We've got Braintree coming up thick and fast. We've got Hemel coming up as well on the horizon. Um, unfortunately, due to a FA Cup exit today for Dartford at home <laughs> at the home of Sudbury, which was a real shock. We've got a Tuesday night game at Prince's Park to try and throw into the mix as well. And um, yeah, there's lots of stuff that's going on at the moment. It's going to be really important to have players like Ricky coming in and adding valuable sort of amount to the squad, really, because, you know, the rotation system has been spoken about quite a lot in the early exchange of the season a couple of injuries and now we're sort of slightly picking ourselves back to fitness we're really going to have to utilize that squad over the coming month yeah we are and um, you know even looking at the youth team as well if you, I watched the under 23s game last Monday afternoon and there's a couple of lads in there that um, we could definitely utilize they've they've done well for Joe Sharple's team so we're, we're going to have to do that because we haven't got oodles of money to to go and get players in but I've got to say you know that's that's a, a a shout out for the chairman as well because the chairman's backed me this week with a couple of players that we wanted to get as usual we're going for two or three and normally getting one so um but uh, you know it's it's nice of him to back me and um you know that one's for the board of directors and what they're doing and chucking money into the club as well because it's all appreciated but you know that's that's a team that i represent today and that is, you know, I'm proud of that team um, because the last couple of uh, performances haven't quite been up to, to scratch. But, uh, you know, we move on and we're doing well. So that's good. Certainly. And uh, again, I know it's a little bit early to start flirting with positions and start thinking about where we are in the league table. But again, today, as we were pressing through the game right until the equaliser, we were up to fourth. I know that it's a little bit difficult to look at league positions, especially when other games aren't playing. Mm. There were only two other fixtures in our league today uh, and they were both at the wrong end of the table for us to really be concerning ourselves with at the moment. But, you know, that sort of pressing that early, sort of tickling that top 10 at the moment. And we're, we've been there from the very start, right from the very first game of the season, right to where we stand now at present. You know, a little bit of a blip in the radar after the last couple of weeks. It always feels a little bit more important after mm. an FA Cup exit. But the reality of the situation is for large parts of the game today, we were sitting fourth in the league and I think we've only, with the point, dropped as low as seven 
seventh or eighth. Right. So, you know, it's big for ourselves. I mean, when you look at, you know, the small amount, as you say, that we've got in terms of the budget offset against other clubs in the division, when you look at the other sort of standings of certain clubs at this level, to be in the mix, even at the early stages, it's got to be good. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm pleased and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said those sort of things because it saved me saying it as well. So, the uh, f- from my point of view, every week's a battle you know every week's going to be tough we're you know we're probably not going to win the league you know but we've got how dare you we've got to be realistic think can we get in that top 10 and then can we get in that seven you know that sort of playoff seven so if if we get in the top 10 this year we would have done unbelievable i think with with what we've got and the budget and everything but um you know we're always disappointed because we feel we can do a little bit better and i think it's a good attitude to have from the coaching staff all the way through players and board and um, you know I'm just pleased that they've played well today a little bit disappointed with not getting the three points but if we play like that every week I might actually pick 10 players instead of 11 (laughs) um, to get us a result but uh, no really proud of them today good stuff I mean we said the same thing after the St Albans game coming away from there with a point and feeling a little bit hard done by when you come away to places like this especially at this level in this league tricky games there are none of them easy we're coming away a little bit of adversity inside the first 20 minutes, but to come away disappointed with a one-all draw is really testament to how far we've come. Another little stat for you that I'm sure you're aware of yourself, but this is now our sixth game on the road this season, and we're unbeaten in six on the road. We've not lost away from home. It's just that home form needs a little bit of a tweak, and yeah. it's, I mean, what can we do really to turn Hard Newish Park into that fortress once again? Yeah, I think if you if you get players like Ricky Ajir in from Swindon, who's got that little bit of quality, and everybody who come today has seen that, and um, he's he's a little bit bit like for me. Um, where we've 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 missed players with that little bit of quality. He'll live in a ground up, won't he, Ricky? Yeah, and um, he's a crowd pleaser. You know, he'll he'll get people through the gate. And like I said to him today, he was unlucky he didn't score two goals today. Um, and he's got to be making those forward runs for us and getting in and around it. Um, I, you know, from my point of view, uh, there's there's possibly another player coming in next week. And um, you know we're we're looking at centre forwards to help out with the forwards that we've got at the moment, and um, you know if we could get those two players in, we won't be that bad, I don't think, over the next month, leading up to Christmas. <coughs> but um, we'll we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Super. Well, Mike, we're just getting ready to close down here at Eastbourne. Your next battle is the uh, is the closed M4, so I'm sure you've got a long trip ahead of you. But for today, it's a point on the road. It's a two-all draw away against Eastbourne. And from all of us here at Blue Army TV, congratulations. Well done to you and your players and a uh, safe trip home. Brilliant. Thanks, Simon. Cheers.